Hi, this video is about choosing a Wi-Fi router. Because why the heck not? Let's go! The first question is a regular one or a gaming one. If you are not a pro gamer or a pro streamer, the regular one will do just fine. Also, a gaming one automatically means at least double the price. Those are the routers that have powerful hardware, a bunch of antennas and, of course, RGB lighting. All that exists to have faster connection, to minimize lags and all that stuff. But once again, if you are not a pro gamer or a pro streamer, a regular one will do just fine. The next question is what type of connection you have. I mean, what type of cable did your internet service provider gave you? I'll call it ISP from now on, just to make it shorter. So, it could be a regular RJ45 connector, probably you have one of those, or an optical one, which is called SFP. Also, there are routers intended for ADSL, and that means telephone line. And if you're wondering, yes, those routers are still made these days. It surprises me so much, because the last time I've seen one of those was like 20 years ago. So if you know someone who still uses ADSL internet, tell them 2024 called and told them to come out of the Stone Age. I'm saying all this because of one port. The one that receives the liquid internets and vaporizes it, turn it in, into waves. Just kidding, that's not how internet works. All I'm saying is your WAN port must match the connector on the cable that ISP gave you. Optionally, if your ISP is a lousy one, or you just want a backup one, or you're gonna use your router with 3G, LTE or 5G internet, there are routers with built-in SIM card slots. Or there are ones that support external USB modems. And that's a cool thing to have if you need one. Wi-Fi generations. It's better to choose a router that supports at least Wi-Fi version 6. They are not as expensive as they used to be several years ago, and their majority has vastly increased since those times. So you have a lot of options to choose from. But why exactly Gen 6, not something less advanced? Well, it's pretty simple. A router is a thing like a washing machine or a fridge. You just put it where you want it to be and forget about it. Just using it. All those generations are predominantly about supported speeds. And if you don't feel the lack of speed now, who knows, maybe you will feel it in a year or two. Not so long ago, Wi-Fi 7 was introduced, so Wi-Fi Generation 6 is the bare minimum you should consider buying. Bands. You should think of buying a router that is dual band. I mean the one that supports both 2.4 and 5 GHz. 2.4 is an obsolete band that most old routers use. Also, in apartment buildings you'll have a lot of interference from some tech, like microwaves, fridges and other stuff you have at home. Also, there are 6 GHz and 60 GHz routers. But I doubt you'll need one of those, because there are only a few of them and they cost a bit less than my left kidney. Or the right one. Speeds. You can buy the fastest router out there, let's say the one that supports 5 gigabits per second. But if your ISP provider gives you only 100 megabits per second, you'll see those 5 gigabits per second only inside of your home local network, well, transferring files inside of it. The internet speed itself would not be higher than those 100 megabits per second your ISP gives you, maybe even less. But then again, we are trying to buy a router that will last for more than a couple of years, so who knows, maybe tomorrow your ISP will have a better, faster package. So for now, the best option would be to choose a router that supports at least 1 gigabit per second. Important thing. Some stationary tech, like your TV, your gaming console, your PC, can be connected to the internet via cable, especially if the router is physically somewhere near those things. Why would you do that? Because your wireless network will have less load. Simple as that. So consider checking the amount of LAN ports before buying the router. WAN port speed. Once again, it's about the speed your ISP gives you. Anyway, almost any modern router supports at least 1 gigabit per second, but you might want to check that anyway, just in case. And now let's get to features you might find useful. Dual WAN. That means you have two WAN ports, which gives you two opportunities. You can either have a backup ISP just in case something goes wrong with the first one, and it will automatically switch between two ISPs, or you can spread the load between two ISPs using them simultaneously. Mesh. 
It's a great thing if your router is located in one particular corner of your flat or your house and it lacks power to provide the internet to the other side of your home. You just can buy another router that supports mesh or just a mesh module and make one huge seamless Wi-Fi network. Actually, mesh is a really great thing and it deserves a separate video and we'll probably make that a bit later, so subscribe to our channel not to miss it. Anyway, if your router supports mesh, it's a future-proof thing that will help you build more coverage for your Wi-Fi network in a rather inexpensive and easy way. Just make sure the mesh router or the mesh module you're buying is compatible with your current one. Beamforming. It's in the name, kinda. The router boosts its signal in the direction where the device that's connected to it is located. An awesome thing. Brands. Indeed, there are some top-notch ones like uh, Cisco, Zixel, Linksys and some others. Those routers are amazing, but they are pricey and they are an overkill for a regular home use. The next ones are a bit cheaper, but not worse by any means. Asus, TP-Link, D-Link, Kinetic, Mercusys and Microtech. If you ignore the cheapest models of those manufacturers, you'll have more than a decent router, but significantly cheaper. The next tier is Chinese ones. Huawei, Xiaomi and Tenda. Five or seven years ago, I would have said those aren't worth buying. But the experience of hundreds of people, some of them which I know personally, changed my tune. So I've got to admit you can have a actually good router for a fraction of a price of the previous two tiers. Also, Tenda is really great. The last ones, as I like to call them, very Chinese. Yes, there's a difference. If you haven't heard of the brand, it's probably not worth buying. But that's a lottery. You can lose it, but also you can win it. The only advice I can give is you can play it, but only if you have no other options and can't afford any router of the brands I've mentioned previously. And this should be enough for you to make a proper choice. If you still have any questions that need answers, feel free to write them in the comments and you'll get an answer definitely, I guarantee it. Also, subscribe to our channel if you feel like it and don't forget to watch other vids. See ya!